Hello, and welcome to this second talk with Andreas Kraft on developing open standard and IoT systems with 1M2M. We've already had our uh, first talk to introduce some concepts. So, uh, Andreas, what will you be covering in this session? Hi, Ken. Um, in this session, we will be learning about the configuration to start working with the CSE. That will set us up for the next set of talks where we start exchanging the kind of messages that you would see when connecting devices or sensors uh, communicating with an IoT platform. Okay, so um, uh, I guess what you're showing us here is an overview of the learning environment. What, what's going on on this slide? This is the basic configuration we will be using uh, in all the subsequent talks. On the left is the user application, which is connected to the internet or by any other kind of network connectivity. In our case, this would be the Jupyter Notebooks running in a web browser. This application has to connect to the ECMAS CSE, and after that, the developer can exercise some basic 1M2M common service functions. In 1M2M, we use the term application entity, or an entity that produces or consumes IoT data, or both. An application entity can be a sensor, a dashboard, or a decision-making application. The interactions shown here involve a request and a res uh, response procedure. I see. So, so you're saying that a user would send an instruction uh, in the form of a request, and the CSE would process it before sending a response message back. Exactly, that is correct. Coming back to the illustration, um, I should explain that the setup instructions also include a command to run a notification server, because we will use that functionality in the later talks. Imagine that our user application wants to receive a notification when reading from sensor changes. Instead of polling the sensor, uh, it can configure an endpoint to receive notifications when new data arrives, though there's no need for polling. I have a separate talk to go through this capability. For now, let's go through the basic setup process where our user sets up connections to the CSE. I will switch over to my browser now to show you steps. Okay, we'll move right over then. Okay, so what you see now on my screen in the browser is a 1M2M GitHub repository hosted by GitHub. Um, this can be reached here via 1M2M, and this one is a repository for 1M2M Jupyter Notebooks. Um, you can install them, you can download them just in a normal way by forking it, or using the GitHub desktop, or just downloading a zip file with all the codes. These are the notebooks, all the tools, all the images you need uh, for the notebooks uh, to run them. Um, we will later have um, a talk about how to install it, how to configure it on your computer. But for now, we will use the binder service, which can be reachable by this button. Um, we will have the link for this in the show notes so you can easily click on it uh, to launch it uh, on your own. So let's launch it. Let's switch here and it's now loading. It takes a second to load to set up all the, um, all the components, to configure all the components, and then the notebook start. Just takes a couple of seconds. Then here we are with the notebooks. This is a start screen where you uh, get an introduction and uh, see all the components and some short explanation how to start, how to run it. There's nothing more to configure um, for you to run these notebooks. It's all running in the net and it's very convenient to use. I guess you are familiar with uh, Jupyter Notebooks. If you are not, this is the kind of documentation you can use to have documentation, text, graphics, and other things, and also executable code in these kinds of boxes. So for example, here, uh, I can execute it by clicking in the box and running it here on the button to run and execute this code. This is a basic principle we will use in all the notebooks here, so it's very easy to use. There are a couple of explanations here, for example, running the CSE. I'm coming to that in a second and running the notification server I just mentioned a minute ago. We have all the exercises that we have extra talks um, here listed here, but we will come to that 
later on. As you remember from the slides I just show you, we have to have a CSE in order to receive a request, to process a request, and then to send back a response. You have to have um, a CSE running for each of the notebooks because this is actually the entity that implements the CSE and to run the CSE. If I click on it, a new notebook opens with some explanations and a box that can be run. If you hit the run button, just wait a few seconds, and you see the CSE running, and then you got a message, the CSE started. Now you are ready to use the other notebooks to connect to this CSE. Okay, well, thanks, uh, Andres, for that. That was um, uh, quite straightforward, and I uh, look forward to moving on to the uh, next exercise.